there is one view that it's a luxury item you should have a some reasonable tax the other wanted to be taxed a little less because if you tax gold then it leads to smuggling cereals are all under exempt category now food grains will become cheaper for common man we have decided to keep coal at 5% percent sugar tea coffee and edible oil all of them are kept into 5% Hello and welcome to this special edition of Commodity Champion. As it's been a major breakthrough for the GST Council as far as finalizing the GST rate structure and several products has been. Today we will discuss about the impact of GST on commodities, the preparedness and of course the impact on prices as well. But first of all, let's take a look at the, some of the commodities which will be impacted. The food grains, cereals and milk have been exempted from GST. The current tax incidence on food grains and cereals across states ranges from 3 to 6 percent. The tea, coffee and sugar prices and coking coal or other cooking coal have been put under 5 percent slab. They are currently taxed at 3 to 9 percent. Coal, which was earlier taxed at around 11 percent, will now be taxed 5 percent under GST. However, the wait continues for the rate structure for gold, gems and diamonds. It will be decided by the next GST Council meeting on June 3rd. Now, how will the GST impact the commodity space, especially for agriculture? For that, we are now joined by our guests in the studio. Joining us now is Siraj Chaudhary, Chairman of Cargill, and Siraj Hussain is former Agriculture Secretary. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Hussain, let me start with you first. And the sentiment is quite positive, with nearly 16 levies being replaced by one GST, and many of the essential commodities are uh, exempted. What is your sense, first of all? Does that really mean an easier way uh, to business and also cheaper food products for consumers? I think on the whole, it has been a very commendable exercise and uh, taking it to this level is a great achievement in itself. However, uh, the agriculture sector, as we know, is in serious trouble for a variety of reasons. And therefore, uh, I would have liked the placement of uh, food processed products in a lower tax bracket. Uh, we all know that uh, a recent study of an ICR institution in Ludhiana on post-harvest technology has shown that there are large losses at farm level due to harvesting practices, preservation practices, etc. So this was an opportunity to promote food processing by keeping the tax rates low so that the consumption could be increased. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Hussain, just coming back to you yet again, uh, what is your sense? I mean, yes, there is a lot still desired by the industry and the participants, but what is your sense on what we have on the plate right now? What is your sense on the transition going forward? I think the transition is going to be quite smooth. I have full confidence in the ability of the officers of the Central Excise Department, the CBEC, who, have, who are going to manage the GSTN. Uh, the tax rates on the primary products uh, were already quite low. In many states, there were no taxes on primary food grains. Uh, and even now, they continue to be taxed at 0%. So that is a good decision. However, there is uh, not much clarity on some of the taxes and levies which were uh, there in certain states like Punjab, Haryana, Andhra Pradesh. For example, the Rural Development Fund, 2% in Punjab, 3.3% mm -hmm. infrastructure development fee. Uh, we don't know what will happen to this. So I'm hoping that uh, wheat and rice and primary commodities will be taxed at 0%. That is a good decision, very good decision. Hmm. Mr. Chaudhary, getting you in the conversation as well, and as Mr. Hussain was pointing out, there is various, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty, a lot of clarity which the markets are still looking at. Subsidy is yet another part of it. The ministers really had no answer to that today on whether or not how would GST really be seen uh, in the same light as subsidies that were given out as well. What is your sense? What is uh, that has left you desiring in the fine print that we have as of now? I think um, to begin with, uh, we have uh, a fairly good exercise that has been conducted. A lot of thought has been given because uh, this was not easy. So many commodities, so many categories, and uh, I think uh, good uh, hard work has gone into getting uh, as much fitted into where it should have been. 
So uh, primary commodities have been exempted. Uh, some basic uh, foods have been uh, taxed at a certain level. Uh, there are, uh, I, I mean, it's too early to say what is, uh, what could have been better. Yes, the, nobody wants to pay more taxes. So, I mean, everything can be said mm -hmm. that, okay, if this was less or this was different. Uh, one thing which kind of stood out for me, uh, particularly as it links into what we are doing, essentially uh, there is an effort to convert most of the basic staples reaching the consumer in packed form. Uh, one, that it helps to keep uh, the commodity or the uh, the product uh, basically safe and second is that it lends itself when commodities or food products are uh, conveyed or delivered to the consumers in packed form it allows uh, opportunity for fortifying them adding nutrition uh, what i saw uh, not for edible oils but when i saw it for flour where there is a zero tax uh, if there is uh, flour being sold in loose form mm. but the moment it gets packed and branded it uh, falls into the five percent bracket which means that it actually discourages people from packing flour and uh, and that i think is uh, not necessarily a good thing particularly when there is a lot of effort from the government and different sectors to promote fortification of flour uh, to improve the nutritional uh, content of it. Mm. That's exactly what Mr. Hussein was, <coughs> excuse me, was pointing out as well on the food processing part of it. Uh, that bracket really seems on the higher side. But Mr. Hussein, uh, you know, I just want to. Uh, I was talking to some FPOs earlier before the show, and they mentioned on how there is still no clarity about contract farming on the lease of land or the produce uh, on the land that would be leased. There is a le there's a lot still left desired uh, uh, in sense of clarification. There's just one month to go. So what is your sense on the preparedness when it comes to especially the lower rung? There are certain issues on which uh, a clarity is needed, but I think uh, those are not major issues. In any case, leasing of land, legal uh, leasing of land is not very popular yet for a variety of reasons. However, I would, I would have liked... Uh, the government to promote processing of food products, agricultural products, because mm. that uh, re results in better realization of price by the farmers. So, for example, juices, if we take the example of juices, they are going to be taxed at 18 percent. Uh, I thought that it would have been better if they were um, taxed at a lower rate of 5 percent, because so much of uh, fruits uh, go waste. We know in Himachal Pradesh and uh, Jammu and Kashmir, the apples go waste. So in order to create demand, uh, spur demand, it would have been better if uh, the taxation was lower. Take another example mm. of onion. Right mm. now as we are talking, onions are selling at just 4 rupee 50 pesa in Lasalgaon in Maharashtra. Mm. Now processed onions are being exported from India. There is hardly any consumption within the country. Right. I was looking for onion categorization, but onion paste, etc., as far as I understand, mm. is going to be taxed at 18 percent. Now, uh, if we want that more of onions should be bought from the farmers in the market and it is processed, then there, there is a need. It would have been better if it was taxed lower so that the consumption could increase, the farmers would benefit, and there would be creation of jobs more than anything else. Mm. Well, yes, you're right. In this day and age where a lot of us really depend on those packaged foods and tins and stuff, uh, that really hasn't really come in handy. But, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, uh, you know, getting you back in, uh, I, you know, again, uh, the feedback from the market is that with just a month to go, a lot of wholesalers, uh, in, you know, the lower rung yet again, haven't even applied for a GST registration yet. I understand some of them are working on temporary numbers here. So, uh, you know, with the nitty-gritties on, with the push still being on, do you think many of them will actually be able to be ready on that deadline of 1st of July? So, to be uh, very honest, uh, there's a big question mark there. Uh, there is uh, obviously a lot of effort being made. Uh, we've been reading it in the papers about uh, the readiness with the large organizations relative to the small organizations. And the challenge I see is that a lot of GST uh, application is about matching various invoices. And if not all players in the chain are ready and performing, uh, you could have a lot of mismatches and, you know, taxes being levied and claims and settlements. Uh, so I think uh, that's an area of concern uh, mm. because uh, for a system like this to function smoothly, all elements in the chain need to be equally ready. And uh, that's a question mark at the moment. So, and uh, we've been reading in the recent uh, few days that uh, 
you know, the readiness is questionable. People are uh, putting out various percentages of what segment is ready and what is not. But I would say that would be a concern uh, as we move into the regime in just less than 45 days from now. And uh, let's see how the government reacts to it. Mm. Uh, Mr. Hussain, same question to you as well. You know, everybody you talk on the street does say that the next four to six months are going to be of pain. While this is a good step, but the preparedness or the readiness is still not there. Uh, the earnings, the listed companies, everybody seems to be writing off the next couple of quarters. So does, as Mr. Chaudhary was also pointing out, there is that pain point as we get closer to that date. Uh, what is your sense on what would you advise really to uh, for SMEs, as, uh, you know, MSMEs, the wholesalers, uh, the lower rung, etc., on how to approach this? My sense is that uh, most of the industry would be able to participate in the GST network. I have been talking to Mr. Najib Shah, who was still recently the chairman of the Central Board of Excise and Customs, and my understanding is that uh, there may be some teething problems, but uh, on the whole. I think the system should work out quite smoothly. So that does not really worry me. We should be fine maybe in about a month or so. And I understand that uh, most of the uh, companies and assessees have already registered themselves mm. and those who have not are going to register themselves very soon. So we should be fine if the GSTN backbone, uh, the network is operational and smooth. I don't think there would be much of a problem. Hmm. Mr. Chaudhary, there also was a statement from one of the finance ministers on how in the next two to three years perhaps we'll come to a single number GST as well. So this is so the market is going into it with the point that this is not final. You could see some changes. You could see some more convergences. Uh, there could be a change. Uh, do you think the, uh, you know, that, that is your view as well, that we are here ready to learn change as we go ahead? Uh, certainly. I mean, we have to stay optimistic because uh, this is a significant change. I mean, never before kind of a change. And if, uh, you know, we close our eyes to what is there just here in front of us, uh, I think we'll be taking a very short-term view. Uh, there will be a lot of learning both for uh, the participants, which is the trade and the business, as well as for the government. And I'm sure, as we've seen with a lot of other reforms in the past, that uh, improvements keep happening on the way. So I would be optimistic. Uh, this is a good change. And uh, there are obviously going to be um, uh, possibilities for improvement. There will be learnings. And as long as uh, the government and the business is uh, open to accepting what needs to be changed, and uh, not take too long to make those changes, I think uh, we are looking at better times ahead, at least in the tax regime. Your point is well taken, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Hussain and Mr. Chaudhary. That is the experts' view then coming in on the GST numbers that we have in hand right now, that it is, of course, a good move. There is readiness in the markets as well. There, of course, is not too much clarity on various aspects, but uh, we'll want to take that point of Mr. Hussein that food processing is something that actually could have had a lower number for job creation and for easy accessibility as well and for of course uh, you know taking off that that wastage that we see in food so much in India I, I, but as Mr. Chaudhary also pointed out that it is a learning experience going forward perhaps we might see some changes and clarifications there but with that it's time now for a quick break coming up now is how the GST impact will be on the gems and jewelry space we will of course discuss all of that and more with our next guest stay tuned